Hi friends of cocktails! If you ask your parents or grandparents what cocktails they enjoyed when they were young, chances are the gin and tonic will be among the answers. So today we are taking a look at this simple mix of gin and tonic, where it started, how it evolved and how I enjoy it today. I'll make three versions, from the oldest to the modern. Now I'll let you know what I think about them. We'll also talk briefly about quinine, the origin of tonic and how gin has evolved as well. A lot to unpack, so let's dive in the gin and tonic edition of old vs new. It's cocktail time! Go back a few hundred years and you could call me a doctor for what we'll make today. Gin was once believed to aid circulation and was prescribed as medical treatment. And to ward off malaria, British sailors would be prescribed a medicinal tincture of quinine, derived from the bark of the cinchona tree, known among the indigenous South American population as the fever tree. Its bark has a very bitter, astringent flavor. So, in 1850s India, soldiers added the crucial components – carbonated water to dilute the potent brew and gin, because it was available. And why wouldn't they? Some beverages that today still contain chisona bark or purified quinine, though not enough to cure malaria, include Amaro Nonino, Dubonet, Lille, Fenet Branca and of course tonic water. We've made homemade tonic water with a DIY tonic syrup on the channel before, so if you're ready to do the research and make it for yourself, check that out later. Just be careful, because an excess of quinine can cause serious health complications, including cinchonism. I actually wanted to do a follow-up episode to that one, since there's a way to make a tonic syrup without cinchona bark, so let me know if that's something you would like to see. I'll also leave a link to a great resource for staying safe with homemade ingredients, cocktailsafe.org, a project of drinks writer Camper English. But if you'd like to enjoy a unique tonic flavor without all the work, Library Co. has you covered. Their premium tonic syrup is made with natural quinine, zesty citrus and pure cane sugar. They crafted the flavor profile to perfectly complement premium dry gins. Same as with my homemade syrup, just top up with soda water to enjoy a superior tonic water or even go beyond the classic gin and tonics and use it in other cocktails. I'll use this syrup in a similar way it might have been used before the creation of carbonized tonic water, which was patented in England by Rasmus Bond back in 1858. Let's build an old gin and tonic. Back in the days, when sailors were still given their daily rations of rum and the officers their gin, they would be given a navy strand gin, which would be diluted down with water. But for use in cocktails, a more popular version at the time was the Old Tom Gin. This was not as malty as its predecessor Hanover, but still sweeter and not as botanical as a modern London dry gin. One wine glass would be an appropriate measure of gin, from the earliest cocktail books, which often used Old Tom Gin. For tonic, we're adding half of a pony glass of tonic syrup. Today's versions of tonic syrups and tonic waters don't have nearly enough quinine to have any medicinal effects other than maybe helping digestion, but the syrup will still give us the distinct bittersweet finish. And since Frederick Tudor, known as the Ice King, was already shipping ice all around the world, we'll throw some in there, then top up with soda water and you have yourself a gin and tonic. But we already mentioned sailors and fighting off malaria, so we can't forget about preventing scurvy on the long sea voyages with vitamin C. A lime wedge is more than they would usually have access to, but it looks the part. Give it a quick stir and that's it. A quick sip of history and we'll be on to gin and tonic number two. Cheers! Lime gives it a nice aroma and goes a long way to balance the sweeter style of gin, but it's still a bit on the sweeter side. Cracked ice also isn't the best for a carbonated drink, but this is a good drink even today. Never mind, back in the middle of the 19th century. What followed in the next 150 years was a major shift in both components of the gin and tonic. The London Dry Gin took over the reins as a dominant style of gin, and tonic took on a progressively less medicinal function, but we got a lot of new flavors. The levels of quinine found in its medicinal predecessors was far too high for everyday drinking, and while gin and tonic never really went completely out of style, the emergence of the craft gin movement in the 21st century really brought us a gin and tonic craze to start the millennia. New styles of gins paired with new styles of tonic and everyone had their favorite. Nobody has taken this further than the Spanish. Their version looks flamboyant with a big goblet or balloon wine glass and plenty of garnishes, but it's built with careful consideration of the ingredients and their botanicals. So once you have the right pairing of gin, tonic and the garnishes, you're ready to make the Spanish GNT. As mentioned, we start with a big balloon wine glass, which will fill with ice. For gin, I'm using Gin Raw from Barcelona. With notes of juniper, citrus, cardamom, coriander and pepper, you won't have any problems adding the finishing touches. For the tonic, I'm using a Mediterranean tonic to pair it with the Barcelona gin. Spaniards know that quality tonic is equally as important as quality gin, and we often stock multiple brands to pair with gins distilled with complementary botanicals. I'm going with a 2 to 1 ratio of tonic to gin, 
but you can find what you like, of course. As for the garnish, we are accentuating the botanicals, but you can also take the flavor into a direction you want. A summery GNT, add strawberry and basil. Want more spice and a pinkish hue, add a couple of dashes of angostura, or just some spices that complement the gin. If it works for you, it's good to go. While I prefer a more minimalistic approach, I can see a time and a place for this as well. Salute! Here the garnishes bring the fresh aroma of basil and spices. Gin's botanicals take over on the palate, with fever tree tonic adding a balanced bitterness, without overpowering anything. The strawberries in there are just a fun addition all around. And now for a modern, cleaner approach. Like before, start with a quality gin, pair it with a complementary tonic, but then also take care of the small details. Make sure the glass is chilled before you start making the drink. Have a clear ice peel ready, check out how to make your own clear ice at home in the linked episode and make some saline solution by dissolving 20 grams of salt in 80 grams of water. It's no secret, salt enhances all flavors and it will do the same in our gin and tonic. Let's build. Gin might just be the only spirit that's used exclusively for mixing, even with the high-end products, so use a quality gin you like to make the best gin tonics. You can't go wrong with the Japanese Kinobi Gin, 2 ounces or 60 ml. Just 2 drops of saline solution can be enough to highlight the botanicals and make the flavors pop a little bit more. Lastly, 4 ounces or 120 ml of Indian tonic. This style gives you the most versatility with its drying bitterness. Slowly pour the tonic in the glass and don't try to be fancy with a high pour down a bar spoon. It releases too much of the bubbles for a beautiful and minimalistic garnish. A lemon leaf. Perfection. Breaking the leaf gave this just enough of a subtle citrus aroma. This leads into a combination of Kenobi and 3 cents tonic that somehow has a wonderful buttery mouthfeel. Simple, delicious and just as refreshing as you need it to be. Popularity of gin and tonics has always been helped by the fact that it doesn't require any special cocktail techniques. Just build it in a glass, add the appropriate garnishes and you're good to go. But if you take that extra step to find the best ingredients and quality ice, it really shows and your guests will love it too. Next week is St. Patrick's Day, so have some stout beer and Irish whiskey on hand. And I'll see you then. Cheers!